Madam Secretary, could you please announce our agenda for this morning? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning to you and good morning, Commissioners. For today's meeting, you will hear six items for your consideration and one presentation. First, you will receive a preliminary report from the Public Safety and Homeland Security Bureau on its investigation into the false emergency alert that occurred in Hawaii on January 13, 2018. Second, you will consider a second report and order and second, <coughs> excuse me, order on recon to enhance the effectiveness of wireless emergency alerts, including improving the geographic accuracy of these alerts. Third, you will consider an order addressing the remaining issues raised by parties challenging the Commission's orders implementing the Connect America Phase II auction, Auction 903, in which service providers will compete to receive support of up to $1.98 billion to offer voice and broadband service in unserved high-cost areas. Fourth, you will consider a public notice establishing procedures for the Connect America Fund Phase II auction, which will award up to $1.98 billion over 10 years to service providers that commit to offer voice and broadband services to fixed locations in unserved high-cost areas. Fifth, you will consider an order to establish an Office of Economics and Analytics. Sixth, you will consider a notice of proposed rulemaking proposing to eliminate the requirement that broadcast licensees and permittees routinely submit paper copies of contracts and other documents to the FCC as specified in Section 73.6.3613 of the Commission's rules. And seventh, you will consider an enforcement action. This is your agenda for today. Please note item 7 on the agenda as listed in the January 23, 2018 Sunshine Notice entitled Amendment of Parts 27, 54, 73, 74, and 76 of the Commission's Rules to Delete Rules Made Obsolete by the Digital Transition was adopted by the Commission and deleted from today's agenda. First on your, agenda to, on your agenda today is a preliminary report presented by the Public Safety and Homeland Security Bureau, and Lisa Folks, Chief of the Bureau, will give the introduction. Thank you, Madam Secretary. <laughs> Ms. Folks, if you're ready, the floor is yours. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Earlier this month, on the morning of January 13th, people throughout Hawaii were alerted on their televisions, radios, and wireless phones of an imminent ballistic missile attack. The warning unleashed widespread panic and fear. The alert was issued by the state of Hawaii through the emergency alert system and the wireless emergency alert system. But the warning was a false alert. Compounding this problem, it took 38 minutes for the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency to issue a corrected alert. As Chairman Pai stated, this false alert was unacceptable. He immediately directed the Public Safety and Homeland Security Bureau to investigate the incident with the goal of understanding how it happened and how to help prevent such an incident from happening again. America's emergency alert systems provide timely and life-saving information to the public, and we must ensure that these systems remain effective. This includes maintaining the public's confidence so that when an emergency alert is issued, the public heeds its call. Today, the, pub, the Bureau presents a preliminary report on its investigation. Joining me here today are Nikki McGinnis, Deputy Bureau Chief of the Public Safety and Homeland Security Bureau, James Wiley, an attorney advisor in the Bureau's Cybersecurity and Communications Reliability Division, and Justin Kane, Deputy Chief of the Bureau's Operations and Emergency Management Division. These talented folks, along with the rest of the Bureau's alerting team, has produced an incredible amount of excellent work on this investigation, the wireless emergency alert item that will be considered shortly, and my recent testimony before the Senate Commerce Committee, all within a very 
very, very short time frame. To Nikki, James, and the rest of the alerting team, as well as others within the Bureau who have helped on these projects in recent weeks, thank you. You have my pride and appreciation, and I am grateful that you are part of the Public Safety and Homeland Security Bureau family. I would also like to recognize Ryan Hagihira, field agent with the Enforcement Bureau, who assisted James and Justin when they were on the ground in Hawaii as part of this investigation. James will present the report. Thank you, Chief Folks, and thank you for your kind words. Good morning, Chairman Pai and Commissioners. Uh, as Chief Folks said, on January 13th, the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency initiated a false ballistic missile alert using the wireless emergency alert system, which delivers alerts to consumers' mobile devices, as well as the emergency alert system, which delivers alerts through television and radio. In investigating the false alert, the Bureau to date has interviewed representatives of the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency in person in Honolulu and received a demonstration of how its alert origination software initiates alerts and tests. In addition, we have interviewed representatives of wireless providers that offer service to Hawaii, the president of the Hawaii Broadcasters Association, and the Hawaii State Emergency Communications Committee, alert origination software vendors, including the vendor that supplies alerting software to the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, other state and local emergency management agencies, and key stakeholders. So far, we have generally been pleased with the level of cooperation we have received, including from the leadership of the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency. Unfortunately, the individual who transmitted the false alert has refused to speak with us. However, late last week, the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency provided us with information from a written statement made by this individual shortly after the incident, which helped to improve our understanding of the events that led to the false alert. By way of background, and to provide context to what happened on January 13th, Hawaii has been actively testing its alert and warning capabilities over the past year. The Hawaii Emergency Management Agency's ballistic missile defense drill aims to simulate a real event. It begins with a mock call from a warning officer who simulates a call from United States Pacific Command, and it ends with the transmission of a test message to FEMA. Under the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency's established drill procedures, the test message should be sent only to FEMA's Integrated Public Alert and Warning System, Gateway. It should never actually be transmitted to consumer phones, radios, or televisions. By November 27th of last year, the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency had memorialized a checklist of procedures for initiating and conducting the ballistic missile defense drill. It had been refined over months of testing through iterative practice and feedback on lessons learned. And the agency was regularly running the ballistic missile defense drill as a no-notice drill, meaning it was commencing the drills without prior notice to the warning officers who initiate the alerts in order to better simulate actual emergency conditions. The final version of the checklist that guided the agency through its ballistic missile defense drill on January 13th was created on January 5th. I will now walk you through a timeline of the events as we currently understand them that led to the initiation of the false alert. In the early morning hours of January 13th, the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency's midnight shift conducted a ballistic missile defense drill without incident. The supervisor of the midnight shift also decided to run a no-notice version of the drill during the transition to the day shift. The midnight shift supervisor specifically decided to drill at shift change in order to help train the day shift warning officers for a ballistic missile defense scenario at a time when it would be challenging to properly respond. At 8 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time, the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency conducted its regularly scheduled shift change. When the supervisor of the day shift entered the agency, the supervisor of the midnight shift orally communicated the intention to conduct the ballistic missile preparedness drill. But there was a miscommunication the incoming day shift supervisor thought that the midnight shift supervisor intended to conduct a drill for the midnight shift warning officers only, those that were ending their shift, not for the day shift officers, those beginning their shift. 
As a result, the day shift supervisor was not in the proper location to supervise the day shift warning officers when the ballistic missile defense drill was initiated. At 8.05 a.m., the, the midnight shift supervisor initiated the drill by placing a call to the day shift warning officers, pretending to be U.S. Pacific Command. The supervisor played a recorded message over the phone. The recording began by saying, exercise, 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 language that is consistent with the beginning of the script for the drill. After that, however, the recording did not follow the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency's standard operating procedures for this drill. Instead, the recording included language scripted for use in an emergency alert system message for an actual live ballistic missile alert. It thus included the sentence, this is not a drill. The recording ended by saying again, exercise, exercise, exercise. Three on-duty warning officers in the agency's watch center received this message simulating a call from U.S. Pacific Command on speakerphone. According to a written statement from the day shift warning officer who initiated the alert, as relayed to the Bureau by the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, the day shift warning officer heard, this is not a drill, but did not hear, exercise, exercise, exercise. According to the written statement, the day shift warning officer therefore believed that the missile threat was real. At 8.07 a.m., this officer responded by transmitting a live incoming ballistic missile alert to the state of Hawaii. The day shift warning officer used software to send the alert. Specifically, they selected the template for a live alert from a drop-down menu containing various live and test alert templates. The alert origination software then prompted the warning officer to confirm whether they wanted to send the message. The prompt read, are you sure you want to send this alert? The warning officers who heard the recording in the watch center report that they knew that the erroneous incoming message did not indicate a real missile threat, but was supposed to indicate the beginning of an exercise. Specifically, they heard the words, exercise, exercise, exercise. The day shift warning officer seated at the alert origination terminal, however, reported to the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency after the event their belief that this was a real emergency, so they clicked yes to transmit the alert. Because we've not been able to interview the day shift warning officer who transmitted the false alert, we're not in a position to fully evaluate the credibility of their assertion that they believed there was an actual missile threat and intentionally set, sent the live alert, as opposed to believing that it was a drill and accidentally sending out the live alert. But it is worth noting that they, actually, that they accurately recalled after the event that the announcement did say, this is not a drill. At 8.08 a.m., the mobile device of the warning officer who transmitted the alert sounded the wireless emergency alert attention signal, distinct audible tones that announce a wireless emergency alert providing the first indication to those in the watch center that an actual alert had been transmitted to the public. At 8.09 a.m., State Adjutant Major General Joe Logan, director of the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency, notified Hawaii Governor David Ige that the agency had transmitted a false alert. At 8.10 a.m., the director of the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency communicated to United States Pacific Command that there was no missile launch, confirming what Pacific Command already knew. The Hawaii Emergency Management Agency also notified the Honolulu Police Department that there was no missile launch. At 8.12 a.m., the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency used its alert origination software to cancel retransmission of the false alert. The cancellation is an instruction to downstream emergency alert system and wireless emergency alert system equipment to cease retransmission. Notably, a cancellation message does not generate an all-clear message. It also does not recall messages that have already been transmitted and displayed on televisions and mobile phones. From 8.13 a.m. to 8.26 a.m., the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency conducted outreach to Hawaii's county emergency management agencies and radio and TV stations to inform them that the alarm was false. But the agency's phone lines also became congested with incoming calls from the public asking about the nature of the alert that they just received. Some calls to the agency did not get 